nest. There was one up there too. Nasty. I am here in Battleground, Washington. We got Randy the Mandy is with me today. He's, doing, <laughs> he's dressed, looking good, dude. I like your outfit. Thank you. Yeah. Just, what did you say? <laughs> Just for the job you want? Not the job you got. <laughs> I want to be James Bond. <laughs> You're looking amazing. <laughs> so here we are. This job is pretty straightforward, um, which is nice because I, I bid this from email and I show up and the trees are actually not bigger than I expected, which is great. Um, anyways, we're in here in Battleground, Washington State. We've just got like, I don't know how many of these, it's like 10 of these, it's probably 10 of these firs, just they're dead. So this, this guy bought this property a few years ago and he started clearing out all the bad trees and he, uh, he left, he, he was, had some dead ones, some ones that are dead and leaning and stuff. And so he figured that he would call me to do these found me on YouTube, you know, and sent me an email. So we're out here. So I just figured this might be a good opportunity to talk about face cuts because, you know, like how deep you go. Not so much talking about the notches today, but just how deep do you cut these notches? Because, you know, if you look up online or anywhere in any sort of safety manual or anything, you know, people tell you to do your face cut is a third. Your hinge wood is about a tenth, uh, you know, 10% of the diameter of the tree will be hinge wood and the rest will be back cut. And I guess if I had to just do a generic rule of thumb, I would also say cut a third of the way deep. There's a good reason for that. But if you stick to that, if you're, you know, if, if you're too strict about it, sometimes you can make your job a little harder than it needs to be. Sometimes it is better to go deeper and I'll explain why. The reason they say if it's leaning forward to do a third of the depth, it's a safe, amount because it, let's say that the tree leans the right way like this tree actually leans this way and if i cut really deep basically it's going to start to close prematurely and i'm going to pinch my saw so i want to cut this about a third of the way deep because it's leaning the right way if the tree were leaning backwards i would also want to cut it about a third of the way because i wouldn't want it to break off prematurely by cutting too deep into it you know so that's why a third is generally a safe rule of thumb when you get to stuff that's pretty straight upright though, once you go a third of the way, generally you have to apply some sort of mechanical, you know, assistance like with wedges or ropes to get it past the center of gravity. This tree is really straightforward. We've got a bunch of trees, so I'll, I'll just talk about it as we go. Me and Randy will take turns. We'll just cut our notch, talk about why we went, why we chose the depth that we did because it's real situational, at least for me, like how deep I cut. So. This one, like I said, it leans the right way. I actually thought about going until it pinched, but there's a mailbox over there. I don't really want to mess around with the mailbox. So I'm just going to cut it a third. It's going to fall on the street. It's super straightforward. We're going to pull it out of the street. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to get right to it. Bad groundsman over here didn't warm up his saw. <laughs> Poor dude. Chunk, chunk the saw. Again. <laughs> yeah, step one, start changing. Yeah. <laughs> So that's another good reason why going a third of the way in is a good rule of thumb. Like if you want to be really safe, you can do even less. You can do like sometimes if it's leaning like super hard, even a quarter of the way in or something. I'm just eyeballing it obviously, but this is about a third. I'm glad I didn't go any deeper because look how nasty and rotten that is. It's kind of roughly a third. I went conventional because uh, if I just cut it at this height, I don't have a stump sticking out. So it's just going to be low when I do my back cut. I go back and forth, Humboldt and conventional. I, I don't know, just... I kind of just go with gut, like whatever seems easier at the time. But anyways, we're a third of the way deep. Uh, I'm gonna have to fall it. All right, just going in the back cut. Nothing fancy. <laughs> Nasty. So, wow, that's so much worse than I was expecting. So obviously any deeper, this thing just very easily could have just crumbled, fallen apart. You want strong wood if you're gonna go any deeper. I think I'm actually a little deeper than a third here, but whatever. That was the rule of thumb. 
Randy, clean that up. Yep, <laughs> got it, boss. <laughs> Randy, clean that up. Absolutely. Come yeah. on, what are you, it's taking so long. All right, tree number two, Randy's up next. This one's not tall, it's just a snag. What's your plan here, Randy? My plan is, hey folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do a deep face on this. Deep face meaning it's gonna go past the point of, I guess, no return. I don't know. Center? You yeah, you can't really do much after you cut into it that deep. So you gotta be pretty positive that it's gonna go, which this one is going no matter what. No top in it, pretty standard. But uh, gonna go deep. The center of gravity is gonna take it on its own. My specialty. <laughs> nice, yeah, so no wedges, no ropes. And I'll just add real quick, you know, because this one's a snag, this is a perfect candidate to go a little deeper because if you imagine, imagine this thing had like 40 more feet of top up there, you know, the more you undermine, the more leverage you have. It's hard to get these stubby ones over because there's no weight in the top. So by coming in extra deep, number one, the snag can take it because it doesn't have as much weight up there. And number two, it's going to help it to go over. All, All right. right. You, uh, you ready? I was born ready. <laughs> Let's do it. Are you ready? Yeah. The camera's rolling. <laughs> All right, I'm going. <laughs> So, Randy just demonstrated the cripple cut. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I didn't. I, I, got, I got too far in. I was like, no, we're going for it. All right. So, it was punky, so it did break. But look how easily it went over. <laughs> this is actually called the cripple cut. Sometimes I'll do this, like, if it's a co-dominant tree, I've got something. If I, if I can't get the saw in the back, sometimes I will just keep nibbling at the front until it collapses over itself. It collapses over itself because... You know, here's the center, and basically, once you get to this point, you've got all this much tree over the center of gravity in this open spot. So it just goes over on its own. So it's actually not bad for demonstration purposes. Do you think that you could cut a notch, like a really deep notch, in this stump? Yeah, and fall it? Yeah, could, yeah. could you fall a piece of firewood? Yeah, I'm gonna try. <laughs> Sick, dude. <laughs> yeah, so that was more what we were expecting. That is so punky. But you uh, see, like, just following that little stump, you see it went right over because he went extra deep. If he would have done a really shallow notch when he would have got to the end, this thing would still just be sitting on top of the stump. I would have to use my hand to push it over or something. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Got to get the crane out here. <laughs> yeah, so, all right, on to the next tree. So this one is just like the first one. It, it leans the right way, right towards the road. Let's just do, let's just see how small of a face cut we can make. You know, if, if I just cut straight into this, I already know what's going to happen. It's, it's, it's going to split apart. It, it's got no, the wood can't flex, it can't close, it can't hinge. I bet I can do just like a tiny, tiny little face cut because this already leans the right way. I really gain no advantage by cutting deep into this thing. So um, usually I would go about a third, but let's just see. How how deep should I go, Randy? Just like a like Maybe an inch like or two? Two inches. This is this um. is barely leaning, and this is a fur, so it's already not prone to barbature that bad. It's also dead, so it doesn't weigh that much. This thing is super light. It's not, and it's not very big either. It's fifty-five feet tall, maybe. So 
I'm going to do a tiny little face cut and just go straight into the back cut. This is like, I'm kind of just experimenting and I, I trust this wood. I'm not scared of this, but yeah, Randy's right. If this was like a big deciduous tree or big maple or leaning really hard, then I probably, I might actually do a really shallow face, but I'd probably do like a boar cut or something. So we're just, just for the sake of talking about the notch depth, we'll show that you really, if it already leans the right way, you need hardly any notch. You just have to basically open up a space of a piece of wood so that the tree can close. So I'll just cut a super tiny notch and see what happens. <laughs> Let's check for Dutchie. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. That's uh, a picture of me next to my notch. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that big old face cut. Yeah, so we've just opened up the wood a little bit. I bet this will work, honestly. I bet I bet it'll work. I think we'll it will see. Too. One more thing though, I will say, I did go kind of steep. That does give it more time to close. If I did a tiny notch like this. <laughs> Not used small. to a, yeah. but you but, can see it, the longer it'll hold on versus the quicker it'll snap. Yeah, right. The longer it takes for this to close, the longer I've got some sort of, you know, control on the tree. So I did go kind of steep on that. Just ignore that one. All right. Okay. Big timber coming down, guys. <laughs> Awesome. Dude, it worked. Yeah, that was a, that's a, it worked. <laughs> that was sweet. So you see, <laughs> look, <laughs> look how shallow this is. You look see, at the tear out. That's crazy. So because it's leaning the right way, you almost need no, see, you don't even need any directional anything at this point. You just have to open up the wood a little bit. So a third is good, but sometimes maybe even go a little shallower, but this just to show you if it leans the right way, the shallower, the better for the most part, you know? Money in the bank. Let me try to fall this stuff. Oh, yeah. Tractor. Remember, remember Randy's. How, remember how Randy's little stump just went right over when you got a. So I'm not quite through my hinge, but I basically am. But you see, like this, this puppy's still stout. Like it's actually hard to get over because I went so deep. I got to find all this gravity. If I would have went in here and undermined it, it would crumple right over. So you see, you, you need to apply some sort of external force. I'm just gonna cut the holding wood off. Obviously, this is so small. I'm not worried about hurting anything. <laughs> Even after severing the hinge wood, it's still standing because it's got no weight to it. It's just a stub. The taller it is, the more, you know, especially like if you're wedging and you're lifting one inch on the back cut, the top of that tree is moving a ton, the taller it is. The shorter it is, the harder they are to get over. Do you know, isn't there some type of mathematical breakdown of like for every inch you pound, you get certain amount of movement on the top like yeah the that... mathematical formula formula exists okay I, I don't know it i just know that it's out there yes. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah equals pounds per square inch yeah. uh, yeah. pi <laughs> 3.1 all right we got randy randy special right here this is this looks like a cut and run what's your plan with this one? Oh, so here's the top we we can't really tell from the ground here if, it looks like it's hung up, right? Like it started to split, but when we're looking up there, it, it almost looks like it's not hung up. I think it has to be, but that tree's so dinky, and this one's got dinky branches, so it's kind of... You think it's it's got to be hung up, right? I think it's hung up, but also I think the weight of a traditional notch up there will break it, will break the branches that it's hung up on. Yeah. I think that's too much weight and too much of an angle for it to not cut through those branches so what are you gonna do just notch and drop uh, it or? i was gonna cut that little piece just because i kind of want to see what happens and if i have to cut and run i mean that's just a cut and run type of scenario but i like it uh, this see the severed i don't know I, you think this back piece because it's all the way through 
You think this is just what's holding it up? Like it I would don't just... know. See, this is the this would be tension wood, and this is compression, and it's lit. I would assume that you could just cut this cut chunk that, off and see fine. what happens. I don't know. Not only one way to find out, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then after if that goes, if it just doesn't go that way, like if, which I don't think it will, I'm gonna probably face cut it up here and tip it out that way. All right, yeah. ready for me to. I'm ready, dude. <laughs> Do you feel it pop? I felt yeah, it the that roots. Was gnarly. Should I do that one? This one, I think it might go. Might go with that one? Look at that. into it immediately. It was like, like you felt the... Nasty tree, dude. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let me go out there and tell you, you when it's... Cool. What's that? You think if I cut that dude, one? I think it might, man. I Look at that. Look how bad that is. That's so weird. It's been like this for a long time. All right, yeah, I'm gonna go out to the road. I'm gonna cut that piece, see if it goes, I'll run. If it doesn't go, I'm gonna face it. All right, here we go, folks. Uh -huh. Well, that answers that. Yeah, dude, it sagged a little bit. I don't think it is hung up. I'm gonna face it. It sagged when you did that. summer breeze so what was going on it wasn't hung up was it uh -uh. it was like, so weird i can't believe that it just stopped right there oh, i think it had like look at all the rubbish up there oh yeah had have been on something but not like but it couldn't handle all the way to yeah, the tree so, the okay thing. that makes sense so it's probably hung up on those twigs but because the wood was still relatively intact that wasn't enough to get it over once he started cutting it put more weight on the front of the tree and it just snapped those branches i'm sure that's what was going on it looks like you got quite a ways into it before it yeah, I got farther because I was scared, to be honest. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. I, I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. Like halfway done with oh. this job. Yeah. Whoops. Sorry. Sorry, folks. Come on, dude. <laughs> I'll cut this up and I'll go get the right. thing out of the road. All right, my turn. This one's, this one's pretty not that big either. It's straight... It's pretty, really straight, so. <laughs> How do I spin this? So, next up, this gigantic, huge, hazardous tree. So it's pretty straightforward, you know? We, we already established a third is safe, but you know, I'll show you. I'll go about halfway, just to center. It does lean slightly in my favor, and we'll get it over, and I won't need to use any wedges or anything. I shouldn't need to, ideally, if I just go like, my goal is 51% deep. long there I, I was long and then i came and took more out of the bottom so this tree it's like wide open drop zone i'm being a little more careless with this one because you know if you see me like if i'm falling something next to a house or a fence or trying to like got a narrow drop zone i'll be real careful and usually i'll, I'll try to stop and like get the face cut out if you cut past that first line see now i'm more pointed this way than this way i changed my directional cut but I was willing to do that, just go a little deeper, just shift it over to the side because there's just nothing over there. It just doesn't matter. But if you're cutting a tree and you've got it sided, you know, you've got your sights on your saw, you're aiming at a certain spot. A lot of people do the diagonal cut first and look at their sights. I do the horizontal one first because that's what I'm used to. All this to say, I'm being a little more sloppy right now because it's like wide open drop zone. And that you can really get in trouble chasing your face cut like that. If you cut too deep and you keep chasing it, you can really change where the tree's gonna go dramatically. Yeah, and sometimes you keep chasing it, keep chasing it, and next thing you know, it just cripples, you know? So anyways, I'm, I'm just past center here. I'm probably like 60% deep. 
and now 61. it's just straight. It should just go over on its own really easily because the center of gravity is over the center of the, the knot, you know? And I suck, dude. I'm like three quarters of the way deep on this. But I mean, it worked, right? Uh, but much deeper and it probably would have pinched my saw or something. But you get the general premise of it. All right, next up. What's your plan with this one there, Randy? Throw a ball this. Oh, sorry, sorry folks. No, 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 closer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lead right here on, <laughs> on, this, <laughs> on this ash tree that I don't want to hit with this. So I'm going to install a rope the a throw line and we're gonna give it a yankee doodle dandy that way nice is that the technical term <laughs> no i just made it up on the fly scene <laughs> Brilliant. yeah so uh, this one might be able to wedge a lot of times this is, this is sort of typical like arborist tree felling it's just crunchy crappy trees that the customer didn't want <laughs> what are you doing over there <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm so learning. I'm now. learning so much today, <laughs> man. That's That's such a crazy style. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, we we probably be able to wedge it. But Heads up. like Randy was saying, if this is anything like the other trees, there's a good chance you stick a wedge in there, and this back is just gonna crumble. This thing is probably really punky, really rotten. It's just gonna be safe if we just install a rope. We really don't want it to hang up in this ash. That would be really lame. It'd be dangerous, so we're just taking a few minutes to install a rope. All right, we got the rope installed with the, just a running bowling down here, and it's up there. Randy's got a nice <laughs> short rope for me to pull. We'll <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, do that in a minute. Good Fifty footer. How deep are you gonna cut your notch? Since um, that's the theme of this video here. I would say probably. 45% if we had to go with our used percentages last time. So I'm probably going to go maybe 40% in. Yeah, so almost halfway in. Almost halfway. Do and you got any reason for that depth? Or is it just like what you do? It's just the feeling that I have for this situation of the tree. Right. I don't... Uh, you cut with your feelings? <laughs> Quite often. <laughs> it's not not the best. Uh, no. Uh, I don't, yeah. I, honestly, I just want to leave like a decent amount of holding wood and good wood like as, as much good woods in there to get it the direction that i want to go before, before getting what? out of there <laughs> before what yeah. before i don't know it before it falls yeah before it gets to the ground <laughs> nice all right sweet smooth mm -hmm. like butter yeah just almost to center there nice moves dude all right we forgot to go over your credentials at the beginning <laughs> of the video it looks like you're a master of ceremonies of some sort <laughs> oh this yeah, I'm, I'm not necessarily dressed for the job i'm doing but <laughs> Yeah, making lemonade out of lemons. Yeah, our credentials are we just happen to be the guys with chainsaws <laughs> on this job site. All right, well, I'll um, go be the rope boy, I guess. Are go pull this, this short rope that you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of options for ropes in that van. There's a couple 300 footers. I chose the 25 footer. Dude, this, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I didn't know we were gonna base tie it. Uh, now we're gonna take it to the isolation station. Yep. All right. That was scary. Yeah, I, was <laughs> I thought I was gonna be running that way. <laughs> I was like, uh. uh <laughs> yeah, no, that were. I was thinking about like, should I run this way? Should or? I run towards it? I thought that when it started to go over, but then I was like, no, it's just don't move. You're fine. That was like, uh, <laughs> was this a wise place to stand? <laughs> All right, two more trees to go. So 
this one's pretty plump and juicy. <laughs> uh, so this leans slightly backwards. So because it's leaning backwards, I'm going to go shallow again because obviously if I cut too deep, it's going to break out, right? To make things a little more tricky though, um, I'm going to do the back cut first on this one because then the it'll sit back even less if I do that. So I'm actually going to bring the saw in. I'm going to do back cut, then wedges, and then I'll do a little tiny notch up front and then kind of go from there. It'd be kind of hard to get a line up there. Those are real twiggy branches. And I just feel like this tree's kind of solid. I don't know. It's just kind of a gut feeling. I feel like it'll hold with the wedges. I really don't want to hang it up in that tree. That'd be lame. I think we're going to be okay. So yeah, back cut first on this bad boy. I definitely am a little more relaxed with trees like this because like worst case scenario this tree actually it'd be lame if this got hung up in something but there really is nothing around so you know if i wanted to be really really safe really critical like let's say there were a couple houses right here we we're gonna fall this i would physically climb up this and, and tie a rope to it so that I wasn't relying on those tiny twigs of limbs and then yeah but i i feel comfortable i'm just gonna back cut first i think it'll work all right here we go I'm actually, I'm looking at the sight still. I'm kind of aiming backwards. I'm just trying to bring the saw in level. And this is my, this is my back cut, right? But I'm still using the sights to sort of aim the tree. I'm probably going to cream that little, whatever that is. Um, but I really don't want to get tangled up in that ash. So we're just going to cream that little guy. And I'm just going to go deep enough until I'd really like to be in a position with this tree where I can have a wedge in it and have the saw and not have the wedge up against the saw and take my saw out do my notch and i'd really like to be able to move my saw inside this tree without worrying about hitting the wedge that doesn't always work it's kind of probably just barely big enough so here we go <laughs> we start with my smallest wedge try to get it upright. My Jeff Schroeder axe. I want to keep looking up. I don't want the top or any branches breaking off and hitting me. I'm going to try to get it up a little more. I hear a little bit of cracking going on in there, so it's actually really close to going, so I'm gonna do a really small face cut. I don't want it to go when my saw's in there and rip my saw out of my hands. So really small notch, because I, I don't know. <laughs> Cause that's what it calls for. <laughs> that's what I want to do. Yeah, it's America. Oh yeah. Don't ask questions. <laughs> I like that wedge. <laughs> Dude, I like this wedge. Long and strong. I'm not sure if I can get my saw in there again. Nope. Gonna start nibbling so, away at the face? No, I, I can drive the red ones in a little more. And then if I hit the hinge, I'll cut a little bit out of the front. my hinge but it's leaning the right way i basically could go grab more wedges drive it harder um 
I can also just do a few swipes out of the face cut um, to open that up, but I gotta get my saw out real quick. I don't want it to close while I'm in there, you know? I got no more face cut to cut. There. Oh, yeah. Nice. Didn't even snag up that uh, that little guy. Yeah, so see, my wedge is hit there. I got a, I cut a little more out of here, a little more out of here, and left a tiny bit of holding wood. Anyways, it went over. It was just kind of slow and steady. I I should have left it more like here and gotten more of this. It worked fine, honestly. So yeah, I think it worked right. All right, the final specimen for the day. This one's a little burly. This is probably 25 inches or so in diameter. Biggest tree here. Nice and plump. It's just straightforward. All the limb weights on this side, but the limbs don't weigh nothing. So this thing's just straight up and down. We've sort of demonstrated all sorts of depths of the notches. I, I'm gonna do maybe 30, 40%, just sort of standard. I wanna leave myself room for wedges. I'm gonna wedge this over and yeah, there's not much to it. <laughs> Goodbye. Timber. You see that? <laughs> Perfection. <laughs> mm. So I just stopped. I was like roughly ten percent or whatever. And I just stopped because I knew it'd be fine. So yeah, a little over a third of the way deep or whatever. And uh, yeah, I think that's all the trees we got here. So That's a wrap. Thanks for watching this video. Tried to make that exciting for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please like and subscribe to this channel. And thanks Randy for coming out. If you want me to do tree work for you, you can email me at guiltyoftreason1 at gmail.com. I will come cut your trees and I'll maybe bring Randy if he's, if he's on good behavior, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Here, why don't you smile for the camera? Wave, say goodbye. Follow him on Instagram, <laughs> Randy is the Mandy. Later, guys. All right, later. Come up with the name Randy is the Mandy. Oh, uh, that's a long, well, I'll just make it short. Uh, I used to hate the name Randy. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get, I would get called it oh, like 10 years ago by my coworkers. They'd be like, oh, Randy showed up because I'd be you know, really frustrated in the tree learning, you know? And then sooner or later, I just embraced it. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm Randy. I'm, I'm the man. I, I go to bars, take off my shirt, you know, fist pump, doing just dumb stuff. And people started calling me Randy all the time. And sooner or later, people just like, Randy was my like given name almost. So Instagram came out and I was just like, Randy is the Mandy. And I'm just too stubborn to change it. Yeah. It should just be my regular name. I think but... it's awesome. <laughs> I think Randy's the man. I, when I found out your name was Ryan, I was not happy about that. <laughs> I know a lot of bosses like, are like, so do you go by Randy or Ryan? And I'm like, Either or, I don't yeah. care. And I, people usually end up calling it's me Randy. Funny how that funny. goes. I made guilty of treason. Just my Instagram name. I just thought it was catchy. I didn't even like think about making a YouTube channel called it or anything. And I don't know. It's, now it's just my thing. I'm <laughs> so, sure people call you a ton, guilty. They don't know my real name. Yeah, they don't even know me.
<laughs> you don't know me, Randy. You don't know me. <laughs> Anyways, all right. I told you the video was over. Now it's really over. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>